Doesn't look too bad, does it, Connor? Right. Well, for Northeast PA. All the gas tanks got a hole in it. <laughs> you might say. Oh yeah, and the motor compartment has a hole in it too. Oh yeah, the bottom of this box, this bottom of this cab is pretty crusty, Con. We're gonna have to do extensive work on the bottom of this cab. Wow. All right, we're gonna start tearing this thing apart. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Necessary evil. God, I got your glove dirty. Don't worry, it'll be all right. Hmm. Connor's over there yelling at his truck, working on it. Oh, <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, Sudabaker. I got the running boards off. Uh, you can see a whole bunch of truck here in powderized form on the floor, <laughs> and I got the box all unhooked. So that's ready to come off. I got to get the cab off and I want to take it off so we obviously so we can clean up the frame and do all that and right now I'm working on see this is a steering column that's solid there's no rag joint there's no nothing the steering column runs directly down all the way down straight into the steering box which you can see right here that bar that goes straight up that way, that goes right up to the steering wheel and it hooks right to the steering box. So I'm going to unhook the steering box. I guess I'm just going to leave it with the cab. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to do all the monkeying around to take it apart. Yeah, I just, uh, I, and I won't even fit up through that hole. So it's going to stay with the cab. But my next dilemma is getting this ball joint off. I got the pickle fork on there. I'm really whacking on it and it just don't want to come loose. I don't, maybe it's original equipment, which makes it 74-year-old joint. Well, I guess I'll do more of that and see if I can't get that apart. I got it, but it took heat. <laughs> it took a little smoke. Yeah, it didn't run. A, I was holding off to use heat because I don't like using it on that because, yeah, the grease, grease was catching fire and all that, but... We got it. Had to get it apart. There's something you don't see every day. This is hooked into the rear brake line. You see the brake line comes from the master cylinder on this side. This goes out to the wheel cylinders. And this rod goes over and it hooks into the clutch pedal. This is all down underneath the truck where they had the clutch pedal and the brake setup set hooked up. But I bet this is for anti-rollback. So when you step on the clutch, it moves this lever and shuts, locks your it's a line lock, I think, for the back brakes. So you could take your foot off the brake, the truck would stay as you let out, as you stepped on the gas and then let off, you know, let the clutch out so you could go without rolling backwards on a hill. I had something like that on a Subaru once. But yeah, you don't usually see something like that on an old truck like this. I, I didn't know it had that kind of thing. Well, it worked on a Sudabaker. It seemed like it was a slow day. I don't know. But... I got the cab all ready to pull, and the hard part of that was the weird way they put stuff together. I had to go in up inside here to get a couple nuts off in here to get the steering column off, which is right here. Now it's loose. It's just got to be popped out. I got the pedals unhooked. 
So all that stuff's gonna go with the cab, and then I'll have the frame in a position that I can actually start working on it. Um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I got this, these Studebakers have this nifty little vent door. Uh, but this one seized up. Right here, there's a pivot, and here's a pivot, and it's really very thin sheet metal. Now I got this one already. I just put a little heat on it with my map gas torch. So now I'm gonna do this side. It's amazing what heat will do. Probably gotta get it cherry red. That's what I did with the last one. And once I get it moving, I'll spray it with some PB blast. It's a delicate old metal, I gotta be careful. It's getting hot, I'm also heating the sheet metal, which isn't good. So I'm trying to avoid causing any deflection in it. Yeah, that's getting hot up there too, but it's not really hurting it. There we go. We're starting to get to where it's uh, kind of cherry looking. That ought to do it right there. Well, let's see if I can get it to wiggle a little bit. No, nope, she doesn't want to go yet. Well, there we go. That's the miracle of heat right there. I couldn't get that moving before. Oh yeah, she's freed right up now. Sometimes you don't need the big acetylene torch, you just need a little heat to persuade it. I'm going to spray it down a little PB. Oh, she's hot still. Spray that when it's cooled off. I'm going to let that cool off and then I'm going to spray it again. Yep, we got her. She works now. Just like she's supposed to. There's the old rubber coming out. That's so dry and brittle. That's going to all get replaced, obviously. It's got a nice little screen there. This door is really not in too bad a shape now that I got her moving. It's funny how rust gets up and under places like that. I don't think it ever got rained on. It's just uh, humidity. <laughs> 